If you want to follow along with me, I'm going to be reading from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. This is uh, after Jesus had died on the cross, and folks, uh, he had said, he prophesied about in three days he would rise again, and so there was a company of women headed for the tomb, and they wanted to uh, make sure everything had been done properly and decently and in order, and uh, focus on Mary Magdalene in particular in these verses here that uh, as I prepared for this uh, you know, uh, I have conversations with the Lord I hope you do and you don't think I'm just really off base out in left field I, I may be anyway uh, but uh, you know, the, the Lord said this is somewhat like the church uh, today today and uh, you know they're there are they're folks that are not back even open their doors not in our community but in some communities some churches have not even opened their doors back up and it's questionable whether they will okay um, it's kind of like when you're out of uh, work or school for a couple days well it's hard after about the third time or so and I'm hearing some pastors struggling with that so and some of us are different phases in our worship of God and uh, the Lord said you know some people are looking for singing they're looking for action roll kind of things and maybe Jesus okay uh, so we're clear about what we're we're here uh, for and uh the word has always been first and foremost, not because I bring it or I'm the pastor, but uh, I am part of the fivefold ministry, you know, the uh, God's hand, so to speak, and it's real simple. The, the little finger represents the teachers, the one that cleans the ear out of the church, okay? And then the the second is the pastor, the, the ring finger, the one who's married to the church. And then that, that, that middle finger is the evangelist uh, pointing forward. And then you see the uh, prophets, that, this finger here that uh, holds that hand together. And then the thumb, the apostles, who touches all the fingers. Uh, so... Uh, we don't always understand uh, that, but that's as by the simple as I can make it. What we represent in uh, bringing the word and sharing the word of God. So, here in verse ten, we'll read verse ten. When the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary? She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rehobona, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your God, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went 
to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. May his messenger be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Mary really took this heart, okay? Mary Magdalene, okay? Jesus had touched her life and she had followed him. She was there at Calvary when the description is told to us in the scriptures that he was beaten beyond recognition. I mean, one bloody mess. And then he cried out from the cross it is finished and gave up the ghost she was there as a witness and knows that he died maybe her hopes died maybe she was frustrated that something had taken been taken away from her that she really wanted to live the life and was at his feet constantly listening to the word of God following everything that he said and now the religious leaders, the Roman occupation forces killed him, took him out, okay? Her and some others came to the tomb because they had taken him down from the cross, once again regulated by the Sabbath to get him down as quickly before the sun set. They wanted to do the right thing and here she came and couldn't find him. The stones rolled away. Maybe you or I would do the same thing. Maybe you and I have struggled sometimes with hopelessness, powerlessness, frustration. Where is God? He's gone, he's dead, okay? He's not answering my prayers. Where is he? She cried and cried. She was asked a couple times, so you know that she really was crying. One of the few tears here and there, but really it was crying her heart out. She saw the angels inside, one at the head, one at the feet, where Jesus should have been. Remembering the scriptures that the angels are given charge over us, Oftentimes we forget that. Okay? Those who serve him and fear him, angels are given charge to watch over us. Okay? She turned and recognized them as angels. Somebody behind her asked her, what are you crying for, Mary? Who are you seeking? Thought he was a gardener, the scriptures tell us. She didn't recognize Jesus. Okay? And yet she had followed him for possibly two to three years. She had been there when he died on the cross. She didn't recognize this new Jesus, this resurrected Jesus, okay? his new body. Okay? Prior to this, following the scriptures, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Then he called her name. She understood his voice. She had heard his voice call her name before. She recognized it immediately and said in Aramaic, Rebona, which is master, teacher. Okay? She recognized it. Probably the joy was overwhelming. Maybe she was a hugger. Okay. Don't touch me. One scripture says, don't touch me. I need to go to my father first. I need to ascend to my father. Okay. What I didn't read, but once she went and told the disciples, it says later that evening, same day, okay, Maybe as much as some folks say, 12 hours went by. 
and Jesus came into where they were with the doors locked, afraid for their lives, and said, Peace be unto you. And he showed them the nail prints and showed his side. Okay. It wasn't, don't touch me. Go ahead. Okay. I'm here. It was eight days later that Thomas came, but what took place between that time that he said, don't touch me, Mary, and he freely came? Obviously, he ascended up and down. He had presented himself to Mary, as in the book of Leviticus, the 16th chapter, the high priest would do, okay? Once making the sacrifice of the animal. But he was the sacrifice. And Hebrews tells us that he is our high priest. He's touched with our infirmities. He was the sacrifice and yet the high priest. He had to present his body to God. Okay? That the plan had worked. Okay? Satan thought this was the best day of his life. He had killed the son of God. Okay? It was the worst day of his life. Before Mary even came, he descended into hell and set free the captives. Okay? Those who had not been saved, those who had looked towards the promise but had not been. And he took the keys of death away from Satan. Okay? Just tell you a little bit, you probably know this. But Satan, our enemy, is a fallen angel. Okay? He has no revelation. God reveals things to you and I. He listens in on the church. Okay? He wants to know what's going on. He'll come to church. He'll listen in and then he'll try and divide. Then he'll try and be divisive. Okay? But it was the victory for God on that day. It was the victory for Jesus as he went into hell itself and come back up came to the tomb and then ascended into heaven and then come back down busy little guy okay he ascended into heaven to present that sacrifice that the high priest did in the holy of holies in the old testament to present that blood sacrifice to god in the mercy seat okay it'd been a while before man or mankind had had any relationship with God. Special people did, prophets did, but now this was open to all mankind. Mm -hmm. The blood on the mercy seat. How do I know it's the mercy seat? How do I know what that's like in heaven? Because God told Moses how to build the tabernacle, the traveling tabernacle when they were in the wilderness. He was able to give the design it's really kind of complicated you know it's a study in itself but there is a mercy seat in there that God showed mercy on folks before Christ came those who diligently sought him it was an expansion when Jesus gave his heart and gave his life and shed his blood that's why it's so important about we take the blood, we do this in remembrance of him. This isn't to just fixate and obsess on the blood of Christ, but the blood of Christ was the sacrifice that is on the mercy seat in heaven itself for you and I. Whoa, when that sinks in, ooh, okay. You have a burning desire in your heart to say, thank you, Lord. Okay, Thank you, Jesus. It just isn't mouthing something, but it's an experience that you have as a believer. When we use the term believer, it's a powerful, powerful word. Okay? I don't just believe today anymore. I don't believe. When I believe in God and believe in the sacrifice that he made at Calvary for me, for you, I'm not ashamed to talk about it. I'm not ashamed to live the way that God called us to live. 
same Bible, same scriptures, same guide, all of us equal in God's eyes. And then he's made us priests, priests in our households, priests in our families, priests in the highways and byways, much like him offering prayers for people. Breaking down the strongholds of the enemy. Being fearless in our love for God. Being fearless in the way we live. That, yeah, you know, I've never been ashamed of the gospel. Never. Okay? Might be a little ashamed of myself not measuring up or not being fully uh, obedient when he has told me something. Or when he chastens you, you won't make that same mistake twice. Mary understood who Jesus was before the cross, and now she met Jesus after the cross. Jesus, by going to the brethren, by appearing to Mary, a new relationship now was established with Jesus and the disciples. We all have access to God. We didn't before him. We didn't have that access. We have access now to him in our prayers to say, how come my prayers aren't being answered, God? Or how come I don't have any power in my life? Or what do you want me to do? Or what should I do about this? And we have access and he communicates to us. We don't need, we have their advocate with Christ, who is part of the Godhead, part of the covenant relationship. It's a whole new revelation when we walk into that room, walk into his throne room. We come with boldness, it says. If there's anything that needs to be cleared up between us and God, won't you have the power to do it. You don't have to sit with the priest. You don't have to sit with anybody. It's you and God. Okay? It's you and God. We study about him. We learn about him. We sit at his feet and say, help me to understand the transition that took place of God between the God of the flesh and the God of the spirit. And here it is, loud and clear. When he moved into that second part of the day after seeing Mary and he said peace be unto you okay? said to the, the disciples they were scared she was crying and she had grief they had grief too but they were afraid for their lives okay? Peter with me denied Christ he probably felt really rotten Later in John, the 21st chapter, he asked him, do you love me, Peter, do you love me, okay? The ultimate question that he asked each of us, do you love me, okay? This isn't a religious thing. This is a spiritual relationship with the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that one day every knee will bow, every tongue confess that he's Lord. Some will have to do that, and that won't be their Lord, but they have to confess that because his word says that. But we as believers say it because we believe it. We don't have to be whipped down into submission. We don't have to be browbeaten into it. That we come willingly to the throne of God. We come willingly to follow him, picking up my cross, you picking up yours, denying ourselves and following him. The devil's the one who says, oh, you don't have to deny all, okay? Just like he did about the tree. Doesn't that fruit look kind of nice, Eve? Okay. He didn't dispute what God had told Adam. He worked on Eve, okay? And then Eve said, okay, here we go. And Adam just quietly took it and shut his mouth. God didn't save you and I to be deaf and dumb. Okay? God saved us so that we would express the reflection and heart of God in our beings. Okay? So 
little more than sometimes we realize the revelation of God. God told me a long time ago, when I show you something, I want you to esteem it. Esteem the Word of God. When I show you a revelation, I want you to consecrate your life even more so. I don't just give these revelations out so you can trash them. I give these so that you can build upon those, that you can advance the kingdom of God that you're part of that building upon the rock, that foundation. You gotta have a good foundation. And so the foundation is that I have come, I have loved, I have died, I have resurrected for you, okay? And he's not asking anything but to follow him. And as you and I follow him, there's a hunger within us to know more about who he is. I was so excited yesterday, I, you know, uh, just, just because we're kind of curtailed on this movement, man, my library is really expanding. Okay? I'm already looking for stuff to study in the Lenten season, okay, in particular. I'm looking at the Lord's Prayer, okay? I read where I thought, okay, I, what more can I know about the Lord's Prayer I don't already know, okay? Well, I read this author who said, when I was a kid, my preacher and my dad said, is it really important to know the Lord's Prayer and to pray it sometimes when I pray? So when I look up at the clock, whatever time it was, if it was 1.56, I'd take the 56 and say the Lord's Prayer over 56 times. That'd probably wear me out, okay? I want to say it one time and mean it. I want to say it one time and and know I'm talking to God Almighty. Okay? If it takes 56 to get his attention, I'll do that. Okay? Being open to whatever God wants. He teaches us differently. Okay? He He makes us differently. We have things built inside of us that are different from other folks that we could reach some people and Others, we can't, okay? He returned to earth and met the disciples. A new relationship was about to begin, okay? As he was preparing them for that new relationship so that when he sent them out and said, go ye into all the world, teach the gospel, baptizing new disciples, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why it's so important, our baptism. Okay? I, I kind of have a little talk with some folks that I've baptized, and they said, I've been baptized before, but I want to get that feeling back. Okay? I said, feeling. Okay? It's about faith. Okay? You get the faith, it's not some joy ride or, you know, like, riding some kind of ride at Cedar Point, but I got this great feeling when I get off of it, okay? I've got off some rides there and been sicker than a dog, okay? <laughs> So it's not about that, okay? It's about this, and you know, I, Hebrews opens up uh, along the same line, just a couple verses I wanna uh, wrap up here. Hebrews 4, verses 1, beginning 1 and following. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine it with faith, it's that word again, faith. Now we who have believed enter the rest, just as God said. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. The plan was from the very beginning the lamb was to be slain before the foundations of the world. 
before Adam, before Eve, before Earth. Okay? God knew what it would take. Okay? He made us. I think often, well, wouldn't that have been so wonderful before the fall of a relationship that Adam had with God? Just walked in the cool of the day with him. Had complete access to him. You know? He thought like God. He talked like God. He walked like God. And then the fall. You're going to have to leave, both you and Adam and Eve. And I'm going to put guards here. You're going to have to deal with your betrayal. Your disloyalty to me. Everything is before God. This fourth chapter goes on into verse 12 and 13 that says, Everything is naked before God. God knows everything about us. Okay? Us trying to create optics contrary. Just be who God called you to be. Okay? That's where the integrity comes. That's where the truth comes. That's where the way comes. That's where the way of life comes for us. Satan has been defeated. God is victorious. Why not follow the winner? Okay. Why not follow him? The high priest who sacrificed everything. He set free the captive. Predators are set free to follow him. Victims are raised to victory and set free. We are in Christ. No more does sin rule over us. Okay. Doesn't that have the power as we walk with God? And when the enemy says, hey, what about this? Hey, what about this? What about this stuff? I just say, hey, that's between me and God. That's none of your business. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. That's been settled a long time ago. Okay? Quit bringing back those things that would separate me from the love of God. The church today, the comparison I see in, in Mary here, that she was legitimately sorrowful that maybe Jesus had been stolen, had been taken by someone. Okay? Church today, and times like this especially, people were looking for singing programs, programs that say, what have you done for me lately, God? That's all backwards. It's all backwards. Okay? What did Mary expect by going to the tomb that Jesus said I wouldn't be there? She'd heard him say it. On the third day I will arise. Had to be someplace in that memory. We serve a risen Savior. That's the reason why I ask that we sing He Lives to start with. The tomb's empty. Countless people have gone. I've gone and seen the empty tomb. There's nobody there. Okay. From my own eyes, with my own eyes. So what am I supposed to be doing now, Lord? I'm supposed to be serving a risen Savior. The world looks for a reflection of what the church is all about. What better testimony than to show victory in my life, your life? What better testimony it is to say victory is always in Jesus. We won the battle, not being cocky, not being overbearing, not being proud spirited. I don't mean that. Meeting people where they are because there are a lot of folks that God puts in our place that need our help. It's just if we're willing or not. I'm not going to spend my time bad rapping the church bad rapping this church that church this is god's church okay people dedicated their lives there are covenants that have been established here that i know nothing about i wasn't even born when this church was established but i would not i would not bad rap the church okay i've heard people willingly do that kind of stuff Man, you bring the curse on yourself when you do that, okay? That's God's business. This church is God's business, okay? 
He's called me to it. He's asked me to better it. And to be better at it because I'm serving him. Not because I've had uh, these many years in seminary or so many Bible studies or so many revivals and that stuff. Only today, you live for today. Okay. Our high priest, Jesus, died for us. Okay. Who lives in our hearts? Who lives inside of us? So I will use my faith for myself, for my family, for my friends, for his church. And I'm going to quit quitting every day and start living the life that he's challenged and called me to live. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you came back. You come back for us. You come back for the church. You fulfill our existence, our establishment. You fulfilled in us, Lord, that need of hunger and thirsting after you. We thank you that your Father and the Holy Spirit are in agreement, that we're in agreement. And we pray, Lord, that we will be strong in you, that you've used this time of separation and separating unto you so that we can hear your voice once again be renewed in our spirit be renewed in our minds help us to focus on the vision for we ask it all in jesus name